five? I don't know how to count that high. Cool. <laughs> okay, well, good. All right. Hey, everybody, it's YouTube Live. Okay, six feet. Hopefully you washed your hands. I just took off my mask. Everybody in this room is wearing a mask. We are still practicing safe distancing, even though Indiana is starting to open up. Okay, you asked for it, you got it. Better production, better sound, better everything. And also, we're on YouTube. Okay, so let me explain. We've been on Instagram live for six episodes. This is episode seven. We still will occasionally do Instagram feeds. We would like to be twice a week with you and hopefully we can continue that. But remember, it's every Friday at noon and hopefully every Wednesday at noon. Okay, YouTube, <coughs> just let me explain uh, again, is this. This will be on YouTube no matter what, even after the live version. So please watch. If you miss something, we can get it. And the reason I'm telling you that is we still get questions coming in. We're still answering them. Even after last week's episode on the five things or the essentials of using a track saw, I'm going to cover one more today with you. Okay. Now, important, make sure you subscribe to Festool USA YouTube channel and hit the notification button because every time we're doing one, you'll get a ding bell and that'll uh, alert you a half hour before that we're going to be going live okay we haven't promoted this we're anxious to see how many people are watching uh, please ask questions because as I always always do I'd like to introduce who is part of our live team okay on production board we have big D on the cameras we have Chris Seibert on the whiteboard. Check this out. We have Mini Gleb, our moderator, and answering all the chat and online questions is Brent Shively. And I have forgotten one very important visionary person, and it's Philip Stranad. It was his vision to get this going, as well as Fabian Klopfer. So we are so privileged to do these Festool Lives with you. Okay, hopefully you like the new equipment, and this is episode seven. The topic for the day is a question that you guys gave us last week. Hey, what's the difference? <laughs> what's the difference between the cordless track saw and the corded track saw? Okay, so really a quick answer is one has batteries and one uses a cord. <laughs> Just kidding. There's really not many differences. This cordless saw, and follow me on this because I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to start talking about them. Okay, <coughs> this is our corded track saw, the TS55 REQ. This is our cordless. It has two batteries. I want to tell you or mention or teach you they're identical, and they pretty much are. They're the same IPM, the same power. Okay, it's just one of them uses a cord at all times, and one of them uses two 18 volt batteries here's the kicker what if you have two older platforms that are lithium ion like 15 which we used to have and 12 volt guess what you can use those as well as well as as long as they're lithium ion okay not to get too confusing this is a, a, a brushed motor this is a brushless motor now some of you may have a corded track saw ts55 req here's the other cool thing about this Every blade works with the cordless version. All the accessories work with the cordless version. It's the same size blade. We did not reduce blade size and make you purchase all kinds of extra guide rails and stuff like that. We kept it the same, but with the same power, the same RPM. So if you look at your TS55 REQ, you'll see it runs at 5200 RPM. Same thing with the TSC with two 18-volt batteries and two 15-volt batteries. W you might be asking, hey, what if I uh, have only one 15-volt battery and I need to keep going? Absolutely. You could put a 15 and an 18. You can use them in conjunction. Or a 12 and an 18, whatever. But when you go down to two 12-volt batteries, it goes down to 4,600 RPM, thereabouts. Okay. The other thing I want to teach you is this icon that everybody 
I've, I've even done a uh, quick post on. You see there's a hair, there's a tortoise, and there's an X mark. So if I'm using two batteries, okay, that's your fast mode. If I go down to one battery, tortoise speed, whether it's 18 volt or 15, check it out. It has to be on the bottom. And if you just take one battery and run it at the top, it, it won't work. That's what the X is for. Now, the other thing you got to understand with that is this. When you go down to one battery, it's 3,800 RPM. Just want to clarify that with you. You also see that on our batteries, we have battery gauges. Okay, We've covered that before. But also on the saw, you also have battery gauges. Okay. Now, I've been talking a lot. I want to do this because when I first saw this saw, i got to speak from personal experience, I went, it's going to come with a bag. <laughs> and my whole life, I've used, I don't care what it is, a sander, um, a slide compound miter saw, chop saw, whatever. Nothing ever goes in a daggone bag. And here's what I've been doing for quite some time with our Festool system is I've been teaching people this. Oh, yeah, with the TS55 REQ, you get a 92%. When we upgraded or refaced it a few years ago, we went from 92% to 96%. Big deal. I could never quantify that because it always went in a hose into one of our CT dust extractors. Now, here's the kicker, and this is my, I always call this my, my Vegas trick, okay? Let's look inside this bag here. You see how there's absolutely nothing, okay? Check this out. There's nothing, and I've been accused of this, there's nothing packed inside the saw either. Okay? I'm going to make a simple rip. And by the way, in the TS55 last week's episode, I teach you all the things, how to rip and stuff like that, how to set depths. Okay? Um, <coughs> what I want to show you is this gets 90%. <laughs> Check this out. I'm going to zip it up. Okay? And I want you to see this, because this is absolutely amazing. Now, as I go through this, I'm going to talk through some of the stuff I covered last week. Okay, just as kind of a refresher. And I'm looking for the piece that I had right here. And obviously, I misplaced it, as I always do. So I'm going to grab another one. We call it our limit stop. This is for when we're plunge cutting. And guess what? I'll do an episode on plunge cutting. I, I got so much to teach you over the years with this. But I'm going to take this, and I use this just to give me a quick gauge of how much I'm going to rip. Okay? Basically, that's an offset. This is for plunge cutting, so it doesn't lift the saw up. I'm going to set it right there. I already have my depth set. I've, I'm going to take and put down my splinter guard like that. But <coughs> one of the things I mentioned last week when I covered this is getting behind the saw. Make sure you're cutting in line. Okay, always check to see your forward of the cut like this. Y and the cams are always engaged. And as I'm cutting, you're going to see that this, and as you see, I'm behind it. I don't stand like this. I'm always behind it. Just like this. And sometimes I actually think that this has more power, but it really doesn't. It's the same power. And as I come up, I bring it up full speed and let go. Okay, and you're going to see how there's no burning. That's the multiple material controls, constant speed under load. But here's the kicker, and I want you to see this. Remember what I just said? Wha oh, by the way, you can take that and hook it if you want. I could have taken this and hooked it up to the dust extractor. Okay, I, us I usually use a 36-millimeter hose when I hook it up to uh, the dust extractor because it's really flexible. Okay, so I have this bag, and this, to me, really quantifies why dust extraction. Because this, check this out. Look at all that dust. And growing up, that's probably what I was breathing when I was cutting, and I never realized how much, by the way, this is eight foot rip on three quarter uh, plywood. That's incredible. The only thing I'm going to mention is you probably need a dust extractor <laughs> to clean it up with. Okay, so somebody asked me today, hey, can you go over Bluetooth? He went over it with the Mini and the Midi on uh, Instagram not too long ago. Okay, so I'm going to just go through it really quick so you understand this. You notice that the dust extractor didn't come on 
and I have a Bluetooth mo uh, battery on there. All our cordless come with Bluetooth batteries now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on auto, and you see this right here? This is uh, the Bluetooth module. It literally takes 30 seconds to install. If I press this, you see how it's going slow? I keep pressing until it goes fast. Watch. Then I, on the remote, I press manual, and that syncs to this. The thing is, is you have to hold it until it goes faster. And here's where people get confused, and I understand it. Let's go over here, and let's look at the Bluetooth. To sync a tool to a module, you just take it like this, and you don't have to hold it. See how it's going slow? And... Okay. So, <coughs> the thing I wanted to mention, and at the very beginning, is the question we got last week. What's the difference between them? I'm looking to buy one, okay? You have to look at it like this. This is how much dust we produced in this bag, and that was one rip. Do you, and, and remember when I just emptied this out and that fine stuff was floating up? Do you want to inhale that? In other words, after two or three rips, and I did this myself, I was always using the bag with a cordless when it first came out. I went back to using a cordless because if we look around here in the training center, this is where I do the majority of my ripping. I always have power. I always have a dust extractor. Okay? I was tired of emptying the bag. But what if you're out on a job site and you don't want to schlep a, a CT dust extractor and um, uh, you don't have electricity? Okay? Then it's the perfect saw for you. All right, hopefully I covered what I needed to cover, uh, and hopefully I made a dis or helped you in making a decision between the TS-55 and the TSC-55. Now, I'm looking over here. Oh, wow, Manny's got some good questions. Okay, how many s cuts can I make with a TSC on one charge? Okay, so... <coughs> in our testing we did with two 18 volt batteries 5.2 amp hour okay we were getting a hundred meters basically 318 feet okay on three-quarter material that's a lot of ripping okay but also in inch and a half material two by material we were getting about 90 feet a little over 90 feet okay that's how many cuts you get um, oh boy that's a whole different topic what are the differences between the HKC and the TS-55? Okay, that is a whole other episode. I, w I don't want to be a spoiler on that. The HKC uses a separate guide rail. It can use a guide rail, a regular guide rail. But the big difference is, think of this. Your HKC is basically a carpentry saw. You're doing two-by material. You're doing flooring. You're doing siding. It's a, we call it our carpentry saw. And it uses the FSK rails. The TS saw won't work on the FSK rails. It's basically putting a speed square connected to your uh, a saw. Okay. Uh, why not a blade break on the TS55 RQ? Oh, my God. Great question. Great question. There is a blade break on the TSC. In Europe, all our tools have a blade break. In the U.S., we have two tools that have the magnetic blade break. The OF2200, you'll see it uh, even with a big bit on the OF2200. That's our router. It uh, is a magnetic commutated uh, break, okay? And another one that has the magnetic break is the KPEX saw, the, KS, um, the KS120. Okay, and it's because if you know when you stop your capex, your slide compound miter saw, the pestle slide compound miter saw, it stops within like three seconds. Okay, now why don't we have it on all our tools? It's pretty simple. We have 110 current. Okay, here in North America, everywhere else in the world, basically everywhere else, there are some other places that don't. They uh, to put that safety stop break is uh, really difficult because 220 it works great with 110 it uh, has a problem with the uh, motors okay wow are the blades interchangeable yes uh the ts55 and the tsc55 all take the same blades we didn't 
we really appreciate you guys who have bought the TS-55, and we wanted to make sure we had a cordless version, and we didn't want to have you go out and buy everything new. Okay? Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you use the TSC with a guide rail? Absolutely. Uh, uh, let's see. Will uh, the accessories of TSC? Yes, I answered that one. Will the accessories of TS-55 work with the TSC? Which one smells? <laughs> Who's asking these questions? Which one smells better? Uh, <laughs> they smell the same. It all depends on what you're cutting. And uh, somebody asked a question. What birthday is this for you? Happy birthday. Oh, Happy God. Birthday. I just turned. Uh, I just turned 28. Sorry, I just turned 28. Just kidding. Um, oh, Little City Workshop is on there. Awesome! I follow him on Instagram. Okay, uh, I'm looking here. Hello, Saint Pierre, Miami, Montreal, Ireland. Woohoo! I still have plans, everybody in Ireland, to be there on Halloween. Uh, I'm going to be in Ireland, my wife and I, uh, brother-in-law and sister-in-law, the last two weeks of October. Woohoo! Let's see, hopefully. The best hose to connect to TS-55 and best suction speed. Well, for me, the best suction speed uh, is always all the way up at number six. I've never, ever lowered the suction speed when I'm sawing. Okay? The best hose to use? It, for me, well, I think this is a great engineering uh, thing on, f on our part. Um, every single, or just about every single uh, dust extractor comes with a 27 millimeter hose, okay? But when I'm using a 27, okay, and I put it in like this, there could be a little bit of a choking point. Okay, it's better airflow with a 36, but here's the beauty of it. See how that always goes inside? A 36 millimeter slides right on the outside, okay, and locks in, okay? I will always, well, for a long time, I, I'm going to contradict myself a little. For a long time, I only used a 27 millimeter on a TS-55, okay? But recently, when we came out with the new um, sleeved hose here, Okay, I use a 36 millimeter. I feel I get a better suction rate with it. More flow, the bigger the chips, and no possibility of choking down. I usually try to always use a 36 millimeter when I'm using a 1400, 2200 router, HL850. Uh, always on my Capex, I'm always putting a 36 millimeter. Think about bigger chips, more airflow. Okay, okay, which has more power, TS55, TSC55? Same power. Same IPM. Okay. Oh, and somebody told me to say Annapolis. Go Navy. Okay, so really quick. I don't know if you're noticing this on film, but you see Minnie right here on the whiteboard? Look down. You'll see a couple uh, feet. We have a special guest in the room. This is Sun, our IT guy. And yes, he's wearing a mask. Cool. Excellent. Okay, we're getting another question. Minnie, you are doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much. I can read you. Does the TSC brush, brushless motor, uh, no, they're the same power. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, God, I, I even hate just saying that really quick. Um, <coughs> because it's a brushless motor, the efficiency of it is, is more efficient than a brushed motor. Um, somebody will say, oh, I had a couple of 6.2 uh, batteries on there. It seems like it was running more powerful. You got to go with the facts. You got to go with the data. It's the same power. Okay, I just wanted to point that out. Minnie, you got more questions? All right. Hey, hey is Festool Canada on there? How you guys doing? Oh, yeah, Montreal. How are you doing? Okay, we're doing good today. This is a fun one. Hopefully, the production's uh, doing good. We've been... Uh, Oh, can I use the TSC to rip hardwoods? Absolutely. It's the same. You can use it. Um, oh, well, and I rip in hardwoods, though. I will switch the blade to a 12-tooth uh, blade. Guys, it's, it's kind of like using a table saw. You know you get that 60, 80-tooth blade for cross-cutting? 
We have weak, we put a 48 tooth blade on here. I cover that in last week's episode. But what I always do when I go to ripping hardwoods, I choose one of two blades. I, depending on, for me, depending if it's like, uh, if it's like wicked hard hardwood, like uh, uh, maple, I'll put the uh, 12 tooth blade on there. That's our panther blade. It's got a deeper gullet where uh, the 48 tooth, and we get this all the time. Hey, I'm using my saw, and it just seems to not have enough power. It's because it's like your table saw, less teeth in the curve. Because you know you have a ripping blade for your table saw. It's usually a 24 tooth flat raker with a deep gullet and a strong shoulder. Same thing with ours. The emerald edition of the TS saw that came out was a killer deal last fall. Um, those who got it have a 28 tooth. There's sometimes, like when I'm ripping cherry, I'll just, uh, I just use that for my ripping blade, the 28 tooth. And oh, can you? Oh, can I use the TSC without a guide rail? Absolutely. Uh, you can use our TS saw without a guide rail. Um, in fact, uh, flooring guy says I covered last week. This makes a flush cutting saw just like this. And they put that right off to do that, You can uh, to put up against the wall to do relief cuts if uh, floors have buckled. And you can do that with this as well. And your lineup is right here. That's your zero line and that's your 45 line on the TS or TSC. You can see it right here as well. Okay. Most people I've ever known always use the guide rail because of the way the blade comes out of it. It's a plunge cutting blade. Cool. And there are, oh, what's that? What's that, Minnie? Can, Canadian? That's what they said. They're Canadian. I have somebody who's Romanian. All right, everybody. I'm going to do a quick wrap up. Um, thank you. I want to thank everybody in this room. I want to thank everybody online who's helping us out. We really appreciate this. We will continue doing this. We are going to twice a week. Yeah. We, we love you. And hopefully... We're doing it. We'll be back. We're doing a good job. YouTube, here we come. <laughs> Thank you so much.